Hello, I'm happy that you're back with me today. As you can see, I'm going to be doing some uh, watercolors, and this palette is um, full of uh, leftovers of watercolor paint that I am trying very hard to, uh, to use up. I have a swatch made on, a, on an index card to give me an idea of what the colors are, and I'll leave that here for me, and I'll try to uh, tell you what colors I'm using. Um, these are, are a mix. There are um, uh, a few uh, uh, Daniel Smiths in there, uh, but there's a mix of um, not, let's just say, these are the uh, colors that I had um, when I was taking, when I started taking my uh, watercolor lessons. So I eventually evolved into a little bit better quality, more Daniel Smith, so forth and so on. But these were just a delight on making, on making posies. I have an envelope here of posies, and uh, I need to make some more. Uh, recently, uh, I made these and these and this, and I used one of the, uh, I believe this was a Jane Davenport um, a water, uh, water brush pen, and uh, it had a little bit of uh, sparkles in it. And let's see, this, 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 and this. So that was my last effort with uh, posy making. And here are uh, part of two of the efforts that I made, um, uh, my original efforts in posy making. And as you can see, practice makes perfect. Your, um, your style evolves a little bit, and uh, I'm looking forward to um, including some of these posies in the uh, design team project that I'm working on for Ephemeris Vintage Garden. And this one over here, and a yellow here, and two, and two neutrals, kind of neutral. And so, this is, uh, this is the road that I'm on today. If you notice on these posies, I added just a tiny little bit of, um, of pen work to add to them, and I think that does, uh, I think that does make them, uh, make them a little bit more, uh, a little bit more attractive. Let me get closer for you to see that. Okay, let me turn this other light on. All right. Sorry. And see, that's what we have now. So these are out of the way, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to plunge in now. Um, okay, I've done some of my outlining. Now sometimes, sometimes I start with uh, with the drawing and the uh, pen work, and then. Uh, do the uh, watercoloring, and in this batch, uh, in this batch, I'm going to be, uh, I'm going to be doing that. So these were uh, started out with a light, light sketch of pencil. Uh, some of these not. I think yes, a little tiny bit of pencil I can see here, and here, here. Okay, and then I was practicing some. Um, uh, a little bit more intricate, uh, a little bit more intricate designs on this one and on these. This is uh, this is just relaxing for me. In fact, I'm going to be taking what I don't finish. Uh, I won't finish it all today, of course, uh, with you. But I'm going to be taking these um, on my trip um, this uh, next weekend. Um, you will be seeing uh, a, a video on Monday this week and one on Wednesday, because we're going off to uh, the mountains to be leaf peepers, and so uh, I won't be seeing you after Wednesday until the following week. Probably I'll, I'll get back on the Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday schedule. But this uh, is the kind of thing that does not take much when I to travel with, and I can relax, and I can sketch a little bit, and then I can ink, or uh, do it I've not tried one of these yet. This should be fun. So, uh, or I can do it putting the uh, the uh, watercolor down first, 
and then adding some lines. And so why don't we just try that right now? Right now, let's have a little, let's have a little fun. I've got my two uh, water supplies here for uh, brush, brush cleaning and clean water and my Viva a paper towel, which is just superb for uh, watercoloring. And I have um, a uh, black velvet silver brush around number six, number eight, and lovely Princeton Neptune number 10 round. And since this is a rather large piece of paper, I'm going to just try this one today. So let's get some water in here. And decide uh, and decide what uh, what color I'm going to take the um, this directly out of the palette I'm not going to be uh, I'm not going to be doing too much mixing here I'm going to uh, now these uh, black velvet brushes hold hold water wonderfully just wonderfully and um, I'm going to uh, plop down some uh, some color sources and I can thank um, CC on CC's creations for um, uh, showing uh, this on her uh, uh, patreon and her uh, YouTube uh, if you haven't met her absolutely uh, go over to uh, CC's creations see how easily the uh, touch and squiggle and roll just works a uh, works a treat, leaving trying to leave a little space between the uh, the petals. And now let's go to a uh, uh, let's add more purple. I just used. Um, uh, Mo uh, mauve, and now I'm adding a little phthalo purple to this, and I'm thinking that might be a little bit too purple. So let's uh, let's clean and uh, dab a little bit and lighten that. In fact, I'm just going to take this and go over here to my uh, to my palette. I love to use palette color, and let's uh, let's add. Uh, uh, some color here and some color here should be a little bit different maybe not and let's just touch the touch the drop and squiggle and you have the makings uh, of a flower now if you would like your um, if you would like your uh, the heart of the petal uh, by the center to be a little bit uh, to be a little bit darker then you can just go right up here to the tip where this is still wet and drop in a little bit of uh, of color to let it move out and then if you have a little situation like that you're very happy because uh, that's uh, very natural looking for a uh, for a flower petal so that actually was a happy accident and up here we can add a little bit and let's hope that this uh, this water moves yes look at that one is just grabbed onto some water and it's going so i'm going to add just a little bit more here to give it an opportunity to move now, this is uh, some of the uh, the dirty water but in this case the colors in the water are all right so i'm just letting this move a little bit and move a little bit and back in back out let's try let's try something else let's go to um, uh, good old Elysium Crimson let's put that down here and I think I'm going to add a little opera to that just to uh, make it more vivid Yes, there. So it's a mixture of alizarin crimson and a little bit of opera, and we'll put the, uh, the three colors here, 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 and we'll lay the 
point of the brush in here and we'll do a nice squiggle. We'll make this one a little, a little uh, larger. No, it's about the same size. Yeah. There we go. And if they run together, they bleed into each other. That's fine. Now I'm going to add a little bit of this purple into this to, uh, to darken it up because I can and I like to make palette color. And let's put a little bit of it here and a little bit of it here. Let's go back here and let's lay it down and squiggle out, laying the brush almost on its side, using the water that's in the brush to get this job done. In fact, I'm going to make this one add a, pill, a petal in here just because I want them to run together. I want you to see that there are no calamities involved in this. No calamities whatsoever. You see the amount of water that's still coming out of this, uh, this brush. Now, if you want to uh, soften any of those edges that you just put down, you get some nice clean water and you go from the outside to the, uh, you go from the outside to the petal and you give up the, uh, give the watercolor a place to move. Uh, do that again. Clean, clean water thirsty brush and we'll bring in water to the edges of the uh, of the petal no nope. doesn't work that way that job doesn't get done that way there we go give this uh, give this uh, pigment a uh, a place to move let's do this last one here And if you get a, um, a line uh, of pigment on there, you know, in this kind of situation, that is, certainly, that is certainly not a problem. Let's see now. Let's make an experiment, since that's what we're doing. We're, um, let's see if we can move that, that pigment. Let's go out here and see if we can soften the edges. Well, yes, we can. And if we go all the way over it, it'll keep us from getting one of those lines. So, we have just learned that if we take a nice thirsty brush in here, we can get some of the line out and then let some of the water fall down from the brush onto the petal. Now this might take a little bit more work, but there it goes. There it goes. Do that again. Thirsty brush. Bring it out on to the hard edge. Back and forth, rubbing a little tiny bit, squiggle, squiggle. And if we lay the water all over the petal, then it gets rid of some of those uh, some of those lines. So let's try this one now. This one's rather more pigmented, so it'll be interesting to see if anything happens, if we can get some motion here. Okay, cut out some of the, uh, come some of this line. Well, you see, this one has, uh, this one has dried and it doesn't want to go. Let's see if we can get it to go. Now, if this was better quality uh, watercolor paper, that would be just uh, a whole different story. But, that's what makes this fun. That's what makes all of this fun. Let's lay some water down there and give this uh, pigment a place to play again. And I'm going to clean, add water, and even bring in some more here to soften, soften, soften. Right up to there. Soften, soften, soften. 
right up to there. Soften, 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 right up to there. Right up to there we go. Give this watercolor a place to play. Oopsie daisy, sorry. Wrong pew. Let's try a little bit more water here. And this is a fun practice piece, a fun exercise. Now, if I want to put, um, I want to put some centers, I want to put some centers in here. Now, what will I use? I think I'm going to use, I'm going to try a little sepia. Brown, brown, brown. Brown, brown, brown. Now, when I touch the tip of this thirty of this pigment and water filled brush to the um, white spots between the flowers, let's see if it'll run, if it'll take up the pigment on here and run into the flowers. Yes, one is one has caught. One is moving a little bit. Okay, let's try that over here. Okay. If there's water for it to play in it will start to play. Yes, it will. Let's give this a little bit more of an opportunity to play. This one. Give this one a little bit more opportunity to play. that beautiful the way that has really run beautifully now let's see if we can uh, if we can make this one play let's see if we can make this one play let's see if we can get a little bit more doings here and more doings here so Now, for all intents and purposes, I'm just going to, uh, I'm going to let these little uh, nests of uh, sepia dry because they're quite, they're quite wet. That's okay. I'm going to leave it alone now and let it dry because it will be lighter when, uh, whenever it does get to it. So, that was our warm-up. And we saw what we can do with colors a little bit here, so... Let's take this first one, and using the same principle, using the same principle, let's do, let's just use our, uh, let's just use our, uh, our palette. Let's just use our uh, palette pigment. And let's go down here and lay our, lay our paint there. And maybe we'll go over to one opposite so that it doesn't, uh, we don't have any behavior starting here. And if you can see, that's quite a little Tiny, that's quite a tiny wet little puddle there. So let's just lay this brush down and go back from the outside up to that and squiggle on some color here, there. And 
we'll get this one quickly, laying that brush down with a point into the color, the watery color that we have laid, and let's uh, let's squiggle that on here. Okay. Now we're going to try the uh, making a clean, watered, thirsty brush, and let's uh, let's give this pigment a place to play. If it comes outside the lines, that will be just fine. In fact, it's uh, it would be nice if it does that. I want to get rid of that line and give the water some place to play. We'll come back to these. And lay the brush down and let's put some water down there and give that some place to play. Clean the brush, clean water, and down here. So the thing that we did here, we are doing inside, inside the given lines. That's all we're doing. Let's catch this one. Lay down and, because there's water the entire length of those bristles. And so there is pigment up in there. Maybe not too much, but definitely it's, it's definitely there. So, clean water. And you notice that water is outside that line, but it is, it is catching, it is catching the pigment. Okay. Now, clean up, let's, uh, let's go to our uh, purpley purpley here, and let's put in some, uh, let's just touch in right up there, and see where that will go, because remember watercolor has a life of its own. It will, or it will not. It will, or not. Now, I'm going to continue here, and I'm going to lay this on top. I'm laying that brush down, and the water is kind of sopping out onto the petal. And I'm starting to really like that flower. Laying that brush down and letting that water sop. That's an art word. You heard it here first. Sop is so good. And now you know what you're going to we're going to do. We're going to get this puppy clean. It's a strong pigment, it doesn't want to come out. There it is. Clean water. And let's uh, Let's lay some water here. Let's give it a real serious, no kidding around, no kidding around playground. So, essentially, right now we're at the uh, we're at the mercy of watercolor, and if we leave it alone, it often does wonderful things. I can use this dirty water because the pigment is the same. If it was grungy brown, we wouldn't be using it. And let's try to move this a little bit now. Let's see if we can get it to go. So, that's going to dry naturally. 
I'm just going to let it happen there. Now let's have a... Uh, played in yellow in a while. Let's have a, uh, a yellow. I think I'm going to start it out with um, uh, cadmium medium. It's, uh, it's got a lot of oomph. So let's get out some of the, uh, the cadmium pigment. Let's, uh, let's put that in here. Get a nice heavily pigmented Nice wet bit here. And just drop a bit of that out. And let's go here. And here. And here. I'm not going to let them uh, keep them away from each other. And here. You know what I'm going to do now. I'm going to do the lay down and squiggle. The flatter the brush is, the more pigment you get on there because there's water all the way through those bristles. I know by now you're sick of listening to me say that, but tis the truth. I'm going to clean again, and I'm going to take some light, cadmium light, add a little bit of that uh, medium, and even a little bit of the sepia. Why not? It's here. Little tiny bit of the, uh, of the red, orange it up a little bit. Oh yes, I'm liking that. Okay. Let's put some here, here just to give it a chance to uh, play with what's there. Alrighty, so you'll notice the shading that you're getting without making any particular effort. All right, now I'm going to go back to this one and I'm going to stick with it. Well, I had to dab a little bit of another color in there. Okay, so laying this brushes down is about as far as you can get it. Let's just get us some. Let's just get some yellow to play with what's here already. Lay here, and it will go up there and play in this playground rather nicely. And I'm just doing this, we're getting shading very little effort because of the pigment and the water that's left in this uh, in this brush. Now, I'm wanting this um, I'm wanting there to be a little bit uh, more color here, but I'm not going to use sepia this time. I'm going to use a little uh, a little burnt sienna. And I have to throw some of that in it because that's what we're using. Maybe a little of this. Okay, now I'm happy. So let's try again. Nice wet brush. And here. 
Now since this petal is under this petal, I'm also going to add a little bit along the side of that one because this one would be on top. Okay, let's have some here and some here. Here. Here, let's see what happens and let's have some more pigment. And around because this is underneath. Here. Alrighty. Now I'm going to make an overlay of uh, light. I'm going to give this uh, give this brush a uh, let's have a little bit of clean water in here. lot of color in there and a lot of water and just one quick tap and I'm going to lay it down to make a little bit more of a playground here this uh, burnt sienna can go where it wishes to go petals we're able to get because of the uh, quality and nature of this uh, of these black velvet brushes. And I need some more. I'll use pigment instead of water. This one's now going to get a chance to rest. This one's next. And how about... Mm -hmm. How about... One, two, three, four. is a uh, this is a mystery color I'm th I think I know what color this is but I think it might be phthalo red don't know don't mind okay let's uh, let's uh, squiggle some color down here and let's squiggle some color in here here with some white the water I'm sorry white some uh, clean water and get that uh, get this to move okay. now in here I think I'm going to go with uh, alizarin again it's darker. And clean, clean water. Let's make sure we have a good amount of clean water so we can give this plenty of room here. I like that alizarin. I'm going to uh, dry this out a little bit. Just put that pigment here. It should play. Should it should it says in fine print. It would be better if I waited for it to dry. So I'm uh, I'm going to be good and I'm going to do that. And 
let's go back now for this one. Let's go back to Hmm. I'm going to do, use this one. I haven't used that in quite a while. Okay, let's have a little bit of that. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Delish. Let's add a little bit of red to that. Mm -hmm. Okay. And we're going to do this whole thing at once. And lay down our colors and lay the brush down and do the squiggle. water? Not yet. Oh my. Okay, brush. I know you're full of pigment. There you go. There we go. Now, I'm going to uh, dry the brush down a little bit and lay some down here. I'll put some more down here. And here we go. Just because those two side petals are under the, uh, are under this one. up some some uh, let's clean off some color and I'll show you how to do that on this one okay we're going to clean the brush water and get out most of the get out most of the uh, water and go in here and lift some color we're coloring we're shading here by lifting by lifting out color that we have put down. And if you have a good clean brush and you get out most of the water, you can, uh, you can get, uh, you can get this pigment picked up. You can clean this a little bit more. Do you notice how clean we can get that? Now I'm going to Put that over that way. Let's clean. Clean water, get most of it out so that it's thirsty. And I'm gonna see if I can get some down here. Yes, I can. So, some more watercolor fun. Let's go back to this one. Nice and dry. Nice and dry. Yes, it is. Well, let's see. Oops. Let's see exactly what we can do here. Let's just decide that we want a. Uh, we want a bit of uh, of stem. So I'm going to use my very favorite, Daniel Smith, Undersea Green, Undersea Green. Dry some of the pigment out. And let's do a stem here. And a stem here. Put some weight on the bottom. Put some weight on the bottom. And the 
points on these uh, black velvets are just wonderful and able to uh, able to do this and let's just put some tiny suggestions of leaves here and here squiggle here squiggle and I think we will uh, just a little darkness here to one side. Good. And now, that will be a final clean here. I'm going to get these are the uh, this is the handful of things that I'm going to be taking with me to the mountains this is uh, Faber-Castell F and S. And since these are fairly big flowers, I'm going to uh, I'm going to start with F. And let's just follow the uh, let's just follow the sepia here. And yes, there are water lines to follow. They're quite clear when you see, when you look at them. When you look, let's just say, when you're looking for them. And I'm not going to put any uh, hard lines on it the way we would see here. That's a different type. This one kind of uh, is very happy making also. And this one got kind of way down in here, and that's okay. That's the way it wanted to play. And then we have another one here. And let's go up here and follow the uh, follow the water lines here. Okay, here's sepia. And we'll go over these white areas. Too much over here, so I'll, uh, I'll use my imagination on that one. Ooh, this one's got a nice two shades, two shades of sepia here. Okay, now I follow. I follow the. Uh, the sepia lines, and now I'm going to, uh, yes I am, I'm going to put in some of my own. Okay, let's close this one up, good. In order to make, in order to make this have a little bit more sense, I'm going to do what I always do: get the mountains and the valleys. So I've got a few mountains here, and a few of the lines that came over. Well, that solves that problem. Alrighty. And I think I'm just going to. Okay, 
let's try doing the same here. I'm going to declare this. This uh, paper is not 100% dry, so don't do as I do, do as I say, please. Okay, add a little center there. And I hope I'm not making you sick. Up here, let's, uh, let's just, oh, no, that's not going to cooperate. And if this one doesn't cooperate, then I'm getting out old standby. some of the mountains. Oh goodness, I cannot wait to go to the mountains. Plus there is an absolutely best, best, best um, antique mall up there. And, I'm going, and it's huge. And it's uh, Wonderland. And so I'm going to be shopping for us too. You know, I always shop with an eye toward uh, what might be what might be a help for you? Yes. See, as soon as I start to do this, I want to do more and more. this now just because we uh, I'm thinking just the finest possible suggestion just the finest possible suggestion of petals here sorry I'm talking to myself and I'm going to the really to the absolute outside of the uh, watermark of the white the clean the clean water we put on yes I'm going to go here and stop and here just to to mark the uh, yes and since these are posies this gives a little bit of a help for um, for cutting well I've done one let me do the other one before I stop for today this is exactly the kind of a thing I'm going to be doing while my husband is enjoying his uh, model airplane contest. I sit down under the awning in the beautiful fresh mountain air and I sit and do this with one eye on him. Which I have to be honest is my idea of hog heaven doing art in the fresh air, the air, well, it has an odor up north that, uh, you know, I just missed from my childhood. So clean and fresh. Ah, well, I do believe that we will declare those uh, posies done. And I'm going to uh, go down the same path on these. These are going to take a lot more uh, uh, pen work, but nonetheless, so we have the, um, and here there's a, there's a, um, a bloom on this one. A lot of people uh, that do uh, watercolor would get crazy with that, and I just, uh, I just love it. It's like a flower within a flower. And uh, so, as I said, this leaves open, me open to uh, uh, cutting and uh, 
add, I might add a little bit of green over that. Uh, I cannot tell yet, but if you have enjoyed this, uh, this adventure today, I do hope that you will uh, give me a, uh, a thumbs up, leave a comment, and I would appreciate your subscribing to my channel. Let's get really close now so that you can examine these. Remember, dots of dark, lay the brush almost on its side and squiggle. Just squiggle, and these are, this one is half of that one and half of that one, and that's just fine. Bye now. See you when I return.